right, guys, this is 18.71 for week six. Uh, the problem says an inflated bicycle inner tube is 2.2 centimeters in diameter and 200 centimeters in circumference. A small leak causes the gauge pressure to decrease from 110 PSI to 80 PSI on a day when the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of air lost? Assume the air is pure nitrogen. Okay, so basically what the problem is asking is uh, it wants us to find the mass of air lost uh, as pressure decreases from 110 PSI to 80 PSI. Uh, so to visualize this, let's look at a picture. Uh, so we have the circumference of the wheel or the distance around it uh, is 200 centimeters or two meters. Uh, and then we have this cross section of the wheel. So this would be like the circle of just uh, an end of the tubing if you were to cut the tubing in half. Uh, and that diameter is gonna be 2.2 centimeters or 0 0.022 meters. Uh, so similarly, we converted or I converted all the other quantities to SI units. So the temperature that was given 20 degrees Celsius is Celsius is equal to 293 Kelvin, uh, and I converted the PSI uh, into Pascals, uh, so 110 would be equal to P2 over here, and then 80 would be equal to P1, uh, as shown. Uh, as far as other things we know, uh, we know the formula for area, or cross-sectional area of the inner tubing, or this circle right here. Uh, and then we know that volume of the tube, the inner tube, is going to be equal to that cross-sectional area times the circumference of the inner tube, which I'm going to use the symbol capital D for. All right. Uh, uh, now, this is a pretty important point. Uh, this is probably the biggest, like, trickiest part of the problem, or at least it was for me, was uh, the problem asks us for the mass of air loss. Uh, and it's easy to get a bit confused at first because the ideal gas law uh, doesn't have an explicit quantity for mass in it. It just the closest thing to mass is uh, n, which is moles in units of moles. Uh, so this tripped me up for a sec, but uh, it's important to know that you can just convert uh, this unit of moles into mass uh, by using the molar mass of nitrogen. That's why the problem explicitly tells us that the air is nitrogen. Uh, so basically how we're going to go about this problem as a whole is we're going to solve for the change in moles actually as opposed to the change in mass. And then we're going to take that change in moles and then multiply it by uh, the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 28 grams per mole. And that'll give us the change in mass or the answer that we're looking for. All right. So again, we're looking for the change in mass. And we're going to do that by finding change in uh, N or the number of moles. All right. So starting with the ideal gas law, we can rearrange it uh, to isolate what we're looking for, which is uh, N. Uh, notice that I changed it from N to delta N because we're looking for the change in number of moles. Uh, similarly, I changed P to change in pressure, or delta P, uh, because we're looking for the change in moles over the pressure drop, or the change in pressure. Uh, so expanding that out a bit, uh, we can change delta P into uh, P2 minus P1, uh, which are the two values of pressure that they give us, converted in pascals. Uh, we can also change V into uh, cross-sectional area times circumference, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, and then all that's over RT, R is a constant. Uh, that is given, or known, rather, uh, and T is the temperature given the problem converted into Kelvin. Uh, so expanding that out a bit further, we're going to break down area into pi d squared over 4, which is the formula for cross-sectional area. Uh, and yeah, so uh, we're left with uh, this value for delta N, or change in moles, uh, which is somewhat the answer. It's the answer, but in terms of moles, so we just have to convert it. Uh, so adding that conversion into the uh, answer uh, using this formula, a relationship. Uh, we know that the change in mass will be equal to the change in moles times the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 28 grams over uh, 28 grams per mole. Uh, so uh, substituting this in for delta n in this equation gives us the change in mass is equal to p2 minus p1 times pi d squared over 4 times circumference over rt times 28 grams per mole, uh, which is again the molar mass of nitrogen. All right, so uh, this is the answer. We know it's the answer because we have what we want, uh, change in mass. Uh, written only in terms of what we know. Uh, so all these are known quantities. We know the two pressure values that the problem gave us. Uh, we know the air, uh, we know the diameter and the circumference. Uh, we know R is a known value and temperature is again given in the problem. Uh, and then of course, this is just a known conversion rate. Uh, substituting all those values in uh, and making sure to convert into, the, into SI units before calculating, you should get about uh, 1.8 grams is the drop in mass. Uh, so as far as context of this problem, this problem is basically just trying to, I would say it's a pretty good example of just manipulating the ideal gas law. This whole chapter is pretty much, uh, it's fairly uh, 
well described by simply just the ideal gas law. There's not much else to it. Uh, so yeah, this problem is just getting you to be able to manipulate this equation and solve for different parts of it. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching guys.